by Dr. Kanupriya Varma on behalf of Progressive Literary and Cultural Society. Welcome one and all present. And good evening to all of you. Progressive Literary and Cultural Society, TLCS, is a non-profit and non-religious organization which has been for the promotion of literature and culture on virtual and real platform. PLCS is founded by Dr. Shamina Asbano on 23rd August 2020. The word progressive in PLCS means moving forward with innovative ideas but keeping intact with old values. The mission of PLCS is to enhance peace, love, multiculturalism, multicultural understanding and brotherhood among different nations. PLCS has organized various multilingual and multicultural poetry and literature festivals. Team PLCS has organized some humanitarian works to support people in need like homeless by natural calamity. It has organized workshops, seminars and discussions on various issues of human existence to educate masses, raise awareness against various social problems by discussions and workshops. PLCS has organized Filipino poetry reading to promote indigenous problems of Filipino poets. The motto of PLCS is entire universe is my family. And so, with this in mind, PLCS India presents Poetry reading of global female poets, women poets crossing the boundary. So I request Lucila, convener of the event, to share her views on women across the globe. Lucila. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am uh, really, really happy to be here with all of you today. It's uh, it's an, an evening that it's very dear to me. But before starting, I would like to present Kanu, the my co-commoner. Dr. Kanu Priya Verma is currently working as assistant professor in the Department of Applied Science at Dr. Shakuntala Mishra National Rehabilitation University in Lucknow in India. She's a poet and creative writer who has many articles in different journals and books across the country. And of course, she is a, a, a valuable member of PLCS. She's the India coordinator. Um, I would like to talk to you a little bit about the evening, our topic. Why do we want to have an evening only for women reading? In a male-centered culture, for centuries, women have surrendered to silence have been placed outside the frame of official culture, limited to their roles as mothers and caregivers. The preponderance of art and literature uh, by name is a given fact. Until the 1960s, the women to succeed and to toughen up to the gender and refuse the innate feminine. It's just not before the 1990s that a new generation of female artists and literate, uh, rediscover the unswerving vocalization of difference in gender, uh, celebrating the display of the feminine as an art language. Um, what, until, until uh, the 60s, and for many, many centuries, women were sharing their voices, their art, only around the uh, fireplaces, in the kitchens, and a new kind of language developed, in my opinion. It, it is a, a kind of feminine language, and in my opinion, and of course it's very personal, the way that women express themselves also through poetry somehow has this very long thread that, that passed centuries and millennia of women gathering among themselves. Um, and to, 
affirm our voices today, it becomes also a way to be uh, vehicles, semiotic vehicles, to create a new reality, a bridge between the mundane and the private sphere. What I would like to say today, I would like to mention the very first poet, the very first known poet in the history of the world. It was a woman. Her name was Eneduanna, and she was a princess and a priestess who lived about 4,300 years ago. She was the daughter of uh, the Akkad king, uh, king Sar Sargon. And she is at once a mystical and heroic figure. She is really the world's oldest known author, and her works were written in cuneiform uh, language. In what we still have of her are three pieces, just little uh, uh, extracts of three pieces. In each of these, she steps forward to speak in the first person. She is the very first author to speak in first per person. She is a very, very well-established historical figure, and uh, well, she was the high priest of, priestess of the moon god Nanna. But a poem talks about the goddess Inanna, and the way she talks about Inanna is very powerful and very strong. She puts together all the feminine voices that um, different voices of women, women not only as the beauty, the beauty in itself, the delicate figure or the mother, but women also as strength, as power, as warriors, and there is everything inside of her. And this is what I would like to celebrate today, you here, all of you here with us, beautiful women, beautiful voices from all over the world, and particularly beautiful light warriors. The very first person that I'm going to present today puts together what exactly Edwana was doing, poem and music. So we're opening today with Eva Santini. Sorry, there is a, a fly. <laughs> Eva Santini is a beautiful singer. She writes her own, uh, and, and poet, she writes her own songs. And she uh, learned Celtic harps and ukulele to accompany with the music her text. She likes to dive deep into the spaces within many dimensions inside her bodies. She travels to those landscapes and, and then transfers those images and energies into her words and her music. She has a master in applied art and she's, uh, um, she started various projects of coach coaching, art movement, and she's also uh, very, very careful with eco-sustainability. So what she's singing tonight is Unlocked Dreams. It's a song that expresses how she experiences art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, Eva, it's your turn now. Okay. Thank you. So I will I will sing uh, another song. I I sent the the song for the for the reading, but I will sing uh, one song that I wrote uh, in winter time, and it's about summer. <laughs> Always here 
and the second one is the year the Camellore Festival. I am going to read uh, Marbles. Uh, the sloping hall filled with noise, astonished bodies embraced, grown like marbles, releasing the knee. Stop shouting, silence. I want to listen. Sunsets and night secrets, the freezing fall, the teeth of the parrot fish knowing Cora, the ticking of the hermit crab on the shore, when water is still hot at the ankles and ray hides in the sand. Is this the sea transferring up to the roots where mermaids? Race, and desert fishermen swim in apnea with long colorful skirts faster than a flesh grabbing treasure for lunch of noisy slow boats in plate who wore a tasty bread I feel a sleep in this dream but after following curious dolphins and sparkling fish like torches in the night but now at the bottom of the blue I'm cold I no longer feel my hand in yours I listen to the big trees of the islands praying while I'm looking for you thank you Sabrina that was very touching Thank you so much. Thank you. And I want to give you a special hug. Sabrina needs to leave, unfortunately, but she will stay with us. Her, her heart will stay with us. Thank you very much. And praise to all of you. And I give you the word to Canoe for presenting the next guest. Thank you, Michela. Next, I would call upon uh, Helen Suelta, who is the author of Speaking Heart and corner of the Blossoms Journals, to present the poem. Helen? Helen, are you there? Tano, thank you. Thank you, I'm here. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you so much and good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all my fellow poetesses from uh, different countries around the world. Now I'm going to read uh, this poem to you. Actually, I have read this several times, but I think I still need to spread this uh, poem because we are all women here and it will inspire women. Okay, the title of my poem is um, Nothing Impossible in the Heaven Beneath. Nothing Impossible in the Heaven Beneath. My children are my golden treasure. Bringing back my thoughts to my yesteryears, my story began when I was a teenage mother. Through breastfeeding, I nurtured my first son, till no milk from me I could squeeze upon. I wish to feed him nutrients he essentially needs to abound. I love to provide him. My world seemingly didn't go wrong. It bled my heart as my purse was thin and empty. Windows were only covered by sacks. That was how pity were we. And nothing could be found in every corner of our dinky shelter. Even tiny ashes of regrets could it be found in there. How bare to us it was representing. From there, I just learned to dream. Though not for me, but for them. I believe it's not late to create a nest for my coming children. Behind that youth's mountain, I whispered my wishes for them. 
At night, as I gaze up the skies, I ask the stars to guide me in heading my way. I wish to be one of them glittering and sparkling gleam. Yes, it was never too late to build my elusive dreams. I heard the whisper of the bees carried by an optimistic breeze. There will be beautiful days coming ahead. And I was and I was motivated by those dreams. I started to carry sap on my shoulder. I climbed mountains. I shouted, use clothing for sale. I made donuts, though I wasn't good enough. House to house, I was selling any stuff. Just enough to have fair and offering for a Sunday mass. And I started to pray so intensely. I don't sold myself to the city. I know I could be more than me. My potential was heavy. If they can do, why can't I? I grabbed opportunities knocking on my door. I started to level up and learn for more. I patiently carried my life. I embraced obstacles and strife. My love for my children was simply my inspiration. They energized me behind tiredness. I could afford to grin and bear behind difficulties. They were the reason why I have to go out rain or shine, as I could not stop dreaming even for a short while. Yet life never stopped teasing me. Tears were entwined in my way. Below the belt, I was being hit. My softness was abused by the wicked. For more, I learned life. And I even learned to write. I work hard without limit. In my work, I poured my spirit. I gambled myself bravely to the challenge of this world. My journey was never been smooth. I tackled every inch of my work, yet I never whined. I continued to walk with faith, come what may. Though I fell and stumbled, it's an arduous part of my path to cross. It had to be that way, yet life was still good. And like a mother eagle, I ventured across the sea. I soared to the highest sky, rising to the great heights. The storm has befallen, but I've never been ravaged by my undying courage. Another day, another sunshine. To humanity, I have to bind. My guide, my guide is my daughter watching me from heaven. In my womb also she suffered the indescribable pain I have been. Now she is the most amorous angel with her cane with tears. She shielded me with her wings. I am fearless and afraid to venture my strength to this universe. Nothing impossible in the heaven beneath. Now I savor it my own self. In every trial I never tell until I could give them that mountain where I started to create my dreams. They are my treasure. My golden treasure is my life, is my five loving children, six including the one in heaven. They are preparing my exquisite crown as I am their endearing queen. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. If they can do, why can't I? Nothing is impossible. With these positive notes, I call upon the next poetess, Dr. Nija Sasdev. Dr. Nija Sasdev is an associate professor in the Department of English, SS Khanya Girls PG College, Prayagraj. She has about 40 years of teaching experience, has attended many seminars, conferences, and published papers in journals. Dr. Sasdev also has a passion for writing poetry. Uh, Dr. Sasdev, ma'am. Uh, good evening and good morning to all of you. I'm really thankful, Lucilia, for calling us and uh, uh, saying something. And uh, just now I heard a poem by Helen. Your poem was really very inspiring. And uh, at the same time, uh, Eva, I, uh, your voice was really mesmerizing. It was a, a pleasure. And Sabrina, your poem was also very good. I mean, I'm thankful to be here, and uh, uh, but nothing 
not much to say. I would like to recite one of my poems. I will. Uh, I, I mean, after hearing all of you, I really find myself a real amateur in this field. But yet, things uh, we nothing is impossible, as just Alan said. So we must proceed with our passion. So I wrote a poem on hope, and I'll read it out to you. Hope is a ship that steers your life. It kindles the spark that gives you foresight to outline your future with full might. Without tribulations affecting your hindsight, crying over spilled milk is reminiscing. Sweet are the uses of adversity is strengthening. Every cloud has a silver lining is infusing a dawn in life with hopes invigorating. These motives are attached as aphorisms in mankind, always standing apart with the victim, the precepts, proverbs, and life's maxims. Trying to translate hope with empathy. Hope resides in each soul and tweaks and twitters with a goal. It stands through torrid storms and lingers long, keeping your spirit warm. No matter what destiny has in store for you, you have to stand upright and persevere. A hope that lies buried underneath, reminding survival of the fittest stands right beneath. Summer is vibrant with the arrival of monsoon. Monsoon showers the hopes of new growth. Winter lies dormant but never loses hope. Echoing, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Hope gives you wings to fly, to float with dreams soaring high. Hopes are soothing winds that whisper nigh, singing melodiously. Be optimistic and never cry. Yesterday's are past. Tomorrow never comes. Today is the present. Make it a legend. Never dread the past. Have no fears of future. For hope is the faith that never abandons you, dear. Hope is the recipe for success. Be strong in trouble. Accept challenges and never bend. Put up your safety belts to meet bumpy roads ahead. For hope is the last thing. Ever lost or dead? Thank you. Very well said, ma'am. Hope resides in every soul. Accept challenges and never bend. With this positive note, I call upon Dr. Shamanas. Dr. Shamanas is the author. Kano, uh, Punwanti. I think Punwanti from Indonesia. Punwanti. As 
the waking half of the world is music. The other half takes a rest for the next day's acts. The two halves are the clouds and crawl, walk, <coughs> run, jump, dance, and even fall and rise and fall and rise again. I got wounded and get killed and was hurt and become hurt and again and again and again. The right country and west tells a lot about the whole journey. All kinds of things and mistakes I have done all the way. No need to be sad. so much uh, uh, my friend uh, dr karun priya and it's been pleasure listening uh, to the women poet of all around the world i believe that women all over the world are same so my field is also women uh, literature so i am reading a poem which is based on women uh, issues there are countries uh, in many parts of the world where still women are struggling uh, to cater their basic need and uh, uh, they are not given much uh, uh, freedom or liberty so the title of my poem is yes i am a sinner yes i am a sinner because i am a woman my birth is my crime and my punishment is life long slavery which have which i have to be bear throughout my life if i speak it is a sin if i laugh it is a sin if i cross the four walls of my house it is a sin if i put makeup it is a sin if i wear short dresses it is a sin if i roam alone it is a sin if i don't lower my gaze it is a sin the society sets parameter of my life the measurement of my happiness the boundaries of my desire the limitation of my rights the confinement of my personality the length of my skirt if i keep desire it is a sin if i move forward it is a sin if i fight against atrocities it is a sin if i raise my voice it is a sin if i break boundaries it is a sin if i cross the uh, uh, the boundaries it is a sin when will this society grant me my real freedom thank you so much for listening my poem i hope you must have been aware of malala yusuf zai she uh, she had to fight uh, when she was very young to uh, just to gain education to still there a society where women are struggling so thank you very much for uh, uh, bearing me thank you chamanaj very well said um, there are different parameters for men and women and the women are still working and moving towards for freedom 
and uh, we can say, I mean, the, these beautiful poets over here, we are, uh, we can say, the role models for uh, women across the globe, you can say. Moving forward, our next uh, poet is Dr. Manisha Singh. Dr. Manisha Singh is a bilingual poet who writes both in English and Hindi. She is currently teaching English in NKVI College, Lucknow, UP, with a teaching experience of about 20 years. She has published several research articles and poems in national and international journals and has presented scholarly papers in national and international conferences over the months. Thank you, Panupia, ma'am. And nice to meet everyone from around the world. Just, I would like to recite my poem, which is on the current scenario. So, hereby I try to convey, convey my feelings, rather our feelings, and pray to God Almighty to forgive us of our sins and have mercy upon us. It's a request on behalf of humanity to the supreme power to share his blessings upon us by eradicating this pandemic. So, my poem's title is Shower the Mercy. We apologize to you, Almighty. Be benevolent to all humanity. We seek your grace and requisition, embodiment of mercy and compassion. This pandemic is extremely hazardous. It's making all the human cadavers. The global environment seems ferocious. Every moment it's essential to be cautious. Be generous now and tell us how to get rid of hellacious corona now. Children of yours are leading you. Forgive us now. From this torment too, the scene is awful and indispensable. The immense loss is uncompensable. We cannot bear your retribution anymore. Lord, do not inflict this anguish. It's so. We thoroughly need, Lord, your clemency. Pardon us now and shower your mercy. Bless us with joy, health and prosperity. We hereby vow to serve humanity. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Manisha. It's really the need of the hour to, for God to eradicate this pandemic so that we can move our friends on the other part of the world also, which uh, we were planning also. Our next poetess is uh, Manju Yadav. Manju Yadav is a multilingual poet and translator. She writes poems and short stories in English, Hindi, and Spanish language. She is a freelance translator from Spanish to Hindi and English and vice versa. She teaches Spanish as a second language in an international school in Hyderabad, India. Over to you, Mandi. Thank you very much, Kalu Nam, and uh, I wish a very happy time to everybody because the times are very different for uh, everyone in the different uh, corners of the world. And as we are celebrating, uh, like we heard so many emotions and so many uh, things that are happening parallelly, the women in power and the suffering of women and the humanity as well as parallelly going on. So uh, I would like to read my poems related to this only. How, how the whole world, whatever we do, wherever we are, however we suffer, at the end what we need is some consolation and some love from another human. So the, my, uh, so the poem I'm going to read uh, bearing the same kind of title, Love at the End. At the end, what matters to a human is the sip of love to soothe his soul. At the end, what matters to a woman is the sip of love to soothe his soul. Drink with a cup of feeling to cement the scars of brokenness. 
sail through the valley of pain to travel the inner isle of peace. At the end, what happens to a human is to sink deeper into his own heart. At the end, what happens to a human is to sink deeper into his own heart. Stop taking the paths of Eldorado. There is no charm of being true to self until discover the treasure of your own crossroads and find your beautiful inside out. At the end, the human becomes his own physician and looks around for more doses of love. At the end, human becomes, the, becomes his own physician and looks around for more doses of love. Oh, the love at the end brings the image. That is enough to make us whole again. That is enough to make us whole again. Thank you. Very well said. Consolation from other human beings is really the need of the hour in this pandemic situation. I move on to our next poetess, Dr. Alka Prakash. Dr. Alka Prakash is a poet, critic of literature. She is a lecturer in the Raju Bhaiya State University, Prayagraj, India. She has published many books, especially on women issues. Over to you, ma'am. A very good evening to all of you, myself, Dr. Alka Prakas. Today I am going to recite a poem titled, Waiting is like the taste of a little. Waiting is like the taste of a little. Waiting is not a mere word. At every moment, at every day, months and years. We are living in this hope. Little bit of dispersed. After being dispersed, it is raising like a fire. After being dispersed, it is raising like a fire. And our dreams are ripened in it. And our dreams are ripened in it. Waiting is like text of a in which there's many written, many unwritten, which makes us a bit crazy. Oh, if there would have been no waiting, then this life would have been so monotonous, so meaningless. Oh, if there would have been no waiting, then this life would have been so monotonous, so meaningless. If theirs would have been no waiting, then every day this physic would have changed its form. It wouldn't have been so wide, this seat of mine. In rain, we would think about that solitary times, in which we have been drenched and became more impatient. In this ruthless hour, it has been long away. Now, please come. Thank you. If, if there will be no waiting, life will be monotonous. Thank you, ma'am. I move on to our next poetess, Reema Sharma, ma'am. Reema Sharma is working as assistant professor in IASC Bilaspur. She writes poems in English and Hindi. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Hanukkah. Priya, ma'am. Thank you very much uh, for making me be part of this uh, beautiful event. Okay. Uh, Manju, uh, ma'am has talked about the pandemic. Uh, sorry. Manisha, ma'am has talked about the pandemic. And uh, I'm also talking about the same situation, but see the uh, expressions uh, may be a bit changed. 
because uh, uh, you uh, what we really feel is every coin has two sides. If it is uh, bad, maybe it's uh, something good is also there in it. So uh, what I have felt, uh, I would like to explain those in my words, and the title of my poem is. The change is good. Ah, uh, I'll remember the days not long back when we met the friends to live the life, hug each other to assure we are living. Meetings and eatings were the symbol of life. The doors were always open to welcome the ray of life inside, with the sense of happiness. And belongingness, but the days have changed, and so has life. <coughs> Now I keep away from my friends so that they can live. Now I keep away from my friends so that they can live. I have abandoned myself so that I can live. The doors are closed. To let the life live, I wonder, has the life changed? Yes, it has, but for good. After so many years of yearning and wandering and hiding myself behind my friends, I feel I have suddenly broken those bars, cleaned the shadow, and met with myself, the real me. With no covers and an honest smile, I feel <coughs> that the closed doors have made me free, free from poorly life, free from pretending to be happy when I really am not. I remember my mother used to say, "Whatever happens, happens for good," and though it's tiring at times. I do feel this change is good. This change is for good. At least I don't have to mask my thoughts. It is only my face that I mask. So this change is good. This change is really good. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for this beautiful poem. Change is good. Really. Every there are two sides to every coin, and uh, if you talk about this pandemic, apart from the adversities, there are certain good things also about the pandemic. And one is uh, uh, we all are now meeting on this virtual platform, which would which I think we would not have thought of also. And uh, our families have also come closer to each other. We can spend more this... time with our family. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, what else? Thing is, uh, this pandemic has made this world such a small place for each other. We are the uh, right from every corner of the world. We are meeting, meeting each other. Yeah, it was not world. possible. Yeah, we yeah. couldn't have thought of meeting so many people together from all the corners of the world. It has taught us so many things. Yes. Yes. So whatever happens, happens for good. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> That's true.
image of his flight in the sky. So, Pegasus on the way, who oh, the power and uses of magic beyond the dry and cold touch of logic. Soaring over the roaring oceans in a flight full of amazing mountains, higher than the luminous clouds, mostly in mysterious shrouds, overlooking the fields of white lilies, lovesome like lissome lassies, reaching distant lands yet unexplored, a creature that the Greek gods adored. Beyond the boundaries of time and space, a symbol of ultimate freedom and grace. Yes, you are Pegasus, the wind stallion, a marvel of creation and real inspiration. The great horse of Greek mythology expressed in wonderful poetic theology. Make me fly in the boundless blue sky on your wings of love, high, quite high. Lift me above the perceived limitations to a region full of dull stagnations. Miraculous caves of my imaginations pulsating with hypnotic reverberations. A wish to catch the alluring moon a wish to catch the alluring moon, hanging like a big bright balloon amid incandescent silver stars and a splendor of constellations. Thank you. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you, ma'am. I wish to catch the alluring moon. The tree is beautiful lion and fall upon our next participant, Dr. Shais Kamashi. Hello everybody, good evening. I hope I, I'm audible. Am I? Yes, yes, sure. So, it's great to see you all here and I'm really thankful to PLCS for giving me this opportunity to present my poem here. And uh, Dr. Kanupriya and Lucid are conducting it so well. And, you know, I'm sitting here in 48, 49 degrees centigrade in Saudi Arabia. So Iva's song was like a breeze and her background set up was also, I could really feel the greenery. So uh, I would like to present my poem. The title is uh, The Receding Youth. So growing old feels like wafting through the glimmering waves of youthful joy and careless times to a shore that is brittle with fear, pain, deceit, melancholy, heartbreak. You are tired and see the beaming waters of youth losing their dreamy waves. The tides are still and you wait for the dusk of life, the sun setting for the good or bad, who knows. Thank you. Thank you, Saishka ma'am. Very beautiful lions. We all think of aging after every birthday. We celebrate our birthday, but then we forget that we are getting older also. Yeah, yeah, but it's one year minus. So every birthday is like, you know, kind of uh, happiness and yeah. kind of scary thing. Yeah. Thank you. So Thanks so much. much. Yes. Dr. Nalini Tandon, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Nalini Tandon. Kanu, uh, Shaista's daughter. Shaista's daughter, Aliza. Uh, actually, actually, uh, actually. You can see her in the participants, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, actually, she has gone for swimming and she didn't come back as yet. I'm waiting for her. So, uh, she, as soon as she comes back, I can just let you know. Thank you so much. Okay, next uh, is Dr. Nalini Tandon, ma'am. Dr. Nalini Tandon is a medical doctor from India. After retirement, she is pursuing her other interests that includes writing poetry. 
Your microphone is muted. You should unmute yourself. Andini. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, hello, everybody. I am honored to be included in this group of such high literary achievers. Uh, but I love poetry and I have, I have been enthralled hearing everybody recite their beautiful poems. Mine is somewhat like Shaista's poem. It, my poem is called Reflections of a Woman. So I'll read it now. That mirror hanging on the wall, so silent, no frills, just facts. It says it all, so valid. The face that stares back at me seems strange. The eyes are puffy, the lashes not fluffy. The shine has dimmed beneath the brow. Still it is mine, I know. The cheeks look deflated. Few wrinkles surround the mouth. I observe with despair. They see appear so uncouth. My bust lost so round, a wee bit shaggy. The waist is broader. It's sim slimness now lagging. The veins on my hand, like wrinkled roots they stand. The skin is dry, looks parched, and joints appear distorted. The nails are chapped, my hair has lost its loss. It looks like a nest of white, gray, and black floss. Toes are all shaped with bunions and overlapping stumps. Without separators, they cling and they clump. The mirror tells me all, but smiles quietly to say, these are your landmarks of life. You have passed your hurdles with a clump and stump. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Very beautiful poem, Reflections on a Old Age. But uh, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, and if we think we are old, obviously, otherwise, I mean, it's what you feel that is important. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, next, uh, I, I request Lucina to uh, proceed on with the program. So now it's my turn again. I am uh, really, really impressed by, ev by everything that I heard until now. And yes, mirror is, mirrors are important for us. Uh, I want to go now somewhere closer to Europe. Uh, it's, we're going to Turkey. Maxine Arda, my beautiful Maxine Arda, she's a valuable member of ELCS. She's a Turkish poet, novelist and essayist, a staunch advocate of women's rights, her feminist viewpoint is reflected in much of her writing. And Maxine will uh, uh, read for us tonight The Cry of a Soul. Thank you very much, Lucilda. And I'm very privileged to be with you all. And so, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. Yes, uh, here we are to mention and talk about the women issues and my poem is about uh, right on the subject in this poem in one line there is something uh, that I'm mentioning maybe it needs to be explained in Turkey uh, especially in the eastern and black sea regions there is a custom that in a marriage if a man dies, and if there is a bachelor brother, that brother marries the uh, bride, uh, her aunt, even when he is younger than the bride or 
anything. We always thought that this was a very backward Turkish custom, but apparently this goes to hundreds and hundreds of years before, uh, which proves that Turkey is a melting spot. This uh, custom started by the Phoenicians in the history, because Phoenicians were very, very rich. And so when a man died, the wife inherited the wealth. And they didn't want the wealth to go away by marriage to another man out of the family. So it was almost a kind of law, social law, in Finnish, uh, uh, between the Phoenicians that the woman, the widow, has to marry if there is a brother of their husband who died, if not to the uh, near, uh, nearest cousin. So after this explanation, here I go about my poem. The cry of a soul. I am a stone-hearted mother. My husband, my dearest, got the rest in so his soul was very young, my man, finished by tuberculosis. I was left in a helpless state, with two kids tugging at my skirt. She doesn't know how lucky she is, the widow forced to marry her brother-in-law. Instead, luck knocked on my door with the hand of my father-in-law. Don't! Don't! Don't do it! Have mercy! I said. Girl, I long for this, he replied. In the next room, the mother-in-law, on the couch, my two children, on top of me, my father-in-law. I sought refuge with a different husband, left the children behind. Widow Ruth grows in my neighborhood. The story of widowhood grows there too. Disgraceful mother, I was called. Shameless woman, I was called. Strong-hearted mother, I was called. I was denied custody of my children. Neither my children nor my fate forgave me. I couldn't tell anyone. My shame, my sorrow, my longing, at the heart of at, eight, at 38, my heart refused to beat. Thank you. That was very strong, Moksine. Thank you for this poem. It's uh, the fate of women who want to fight for the freedom. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. We go now to Greece and we invite Marakti Mitropoulou to read a poem. Marakti is a history teacher, poet and writer from Greece. Her literary work has been translated in English, Chinese, Taiwanese, Bengali and Spanish. She's going to read tonight for us, Eternity. Good evening to all. I'm uh, very glad to participate and this lady's uh, poetry uh, reading. I'm going to recite my poem Eternity to you. Dressed in a white tunic, sunbeams embroidered, and bare feet along the river I walk. Dressed in a golden tunic, above the stars I rose. Dressed in a red tunic, I tasted passion over the centuries. With you, in the circle of heaven, in the circle of sea, in the circle of earth, with you, in the walls of war, in the whisper of peace, in the blonde cornfields, with you, in the sounds of music, in the homelands we love, yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever, with you, in the pages engraved inside us, in the light, in the dark, in the miracle of life, history, now begins. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Smaragdi. It's uh, a lot of symbolism in the different colors. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's now time. So, yes. <laughs> it's now time for Dalila. I, I, Dalila, I, I know you since many years and I'm always wrong with your name. Yes. Eowi. Eowi. I'm like so plans. sorry, my love. Eowi. Eowi. One day I will be able to say it. I'm yeah. always sorry. So, you are. <laughs> Dalila comes from Morocco and she's Italian as well. She's a poet, she knows so many languages. She's a poet, she's a um, cal language and Arab culture teacher, and she works for the FAO in Rome. Uh, she organizes and conducts. 2002, the bilingual uh, literary cafe Hinan Argana, and uh, she also works for the uh, Mondial Movement of Poetry. She works also for different uh, journals and newspapers, and she published until now 43 books, both as authors and co-authors, and even an Arab manual in three volumes with, for the university, International University Union at Tuna. Her poems have been translated in 13 languages. And tonight she's going to read for us Lavender. Uh, Lucilla, thank you so much, my dear. Thank you for this opportunity to uh, share uh, some emotions. Uh, with uh, this uh, uh, kind bouquet of flowers uh, around the world. Thank you so much. I'm really honored, uh, especially this is my first time after coronavirus. And I, I was positive for uh, coronavirus. Uh, so it's my first time to, to be in touch with the world. So thank you so much. And my uh, poem title is Lavender. Uh, I read it in English. Uh, so the poem uh, says, when, when has the light of the lighthouse ever begged for attention from the heat of the winds? Or to be sometimes or forever covered by the breaker, or by the, uh, by the broken way. You are not at home. You are not at home. You are not a crown. And not even on the face of a medal. You are not the elixir of life. And not even a smile. That can remain on one street forever. Unfold your sails. Unfold your sails and get away from the shore from which you thought of its purity as if it was limits. Your absence, your absence will not make the towers of the forties away. The brambles will not drive in paradise in the place of Lavanda. Your absence will only increase the museums of impairments and then more items or to the shelves. And then more items to the shelves. And then Thank you so much. I am really happy that your first encounter after the COVID <laughs> is with us. I'm so happy about this. It's a really on. It's a, I'm a really honored. I'm I really am. Honored. We are honored. We are honored for, because of that. And I wish for you that you unfold your sails and get away from the shore. 
thank you, Chua, for this wonderful introduction. Um, I'm so glad and I'm so happy to be part of this pure uh, energy. Um, do you know how distances are embraced? First, you erase the borders, all of them, spatial and time, geographic and non-geographic, those of the mind and those of the heart, and those you do not want to hear about. Then you try to shape the void. You measure a few meters of peace and a few more of wistfulness. Your hands are drawing in the emptiness, and if you have at least a bit of fantasy as I do, if you are lucky not to be betrayed by inaccurate memories, you will embrace my distance as you embrace the closest to your heart. For it's everything that remained to us after countless attempts for closeness, distance became our closest one. You ask me, why I embrace emptiness? I tell you, I do not know what oblivion is like. I do not know what forgetting is like. I just know what distances are like, and the emptiness between them, and the particles of air in which I kiss you, and the kilometers outrun by every thought just to reach you. I told you. And I will tell you again, I do not know how to embrace oblivion. I do not know how to grip something that does not exist. You do exist. So tell me, how to turn you into emptiness? When I have you, with all your wholeness, in my loneliness, you do exist. Though I do not know how. There is no way how. If you ask me again, as the night before I left, what I write about most often, I will not tell you about wistfulness, about emptiness, about loss. These verses know how many distances they brought together. And I will tell you about arrivals, about closeness, about Togetherness. Thank you very much. Grazie. <laughs> Thank you, Cristina. Uh, we couldn't expect anything less. A very theatrical poem and distances. What are distances? Uh, can we ever reach somebody if two points, if the distance between two points is made of millions, in infinite, and at other points, can we ever reach anybody? <laughs> so Gloria, I see that Gloria Sofia was able to connect again. So Gloria, if you're there, turn on your camera so I can present. Okay, I'm going to present you now. So Gloria Sofia is originally, is, uh, comes originally from Cape Verde. Now she lives in the Netherlands where she's studying for a Master of Arts in Management and Nature Conservation. To tell her life in few words, she studied engineering, of, gestional engineering of environment in the Azores. She works together with journals and magazines internationally. She composes music and writes poems. She has been translated in uh, 10 different languages and published in several anthologies and magazines all over the world. She represents her country, Cape Verde, in international congresses of literature. She's been also invited at Harvard, another university, to have conferences on gender and literature. She's reading tonight, Be Chromatic. Gloria. Gloria, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Hello, everyone. Thank you to invite me to, me to be here today. I'm so glad all the time to read poetry and to be with you. 
I am so uh, proud to see the uh, Irina. I knew I knew her. Thank you, Irina. And uh, Lucilia, I get you know that I love you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I'm I, I'm so proud to be here with the women because we know that uh, our life was all the time war. We we have to 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 fight to have a lot of things. Leave the no, sorry. Um, to have uh, love, to have freedom, to have peace, we have to fight more and more than everybody. Um, I I write one poem. poem the is my English is not 100%, but I will try to read it in English. Is a uh, life is a war. Hurry, shall I? One minute, please. I will try to listen this. Okay. I will I will begin. Life is a war. Dreams shared by story from a dry and an unsuccessful world. I my God! I cannot write in English. So much, I will read in Portuguese and I will send to you, maybe you read it. Please, can, can, can I do that? Yes, we make an exception. You can read it in Portuguese and send us the translation in, uh, in the chat. Okay, thank, thank you me. very much. I, I will send it in, uh, in the woman. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you please send it in English to the chat now, so we have the verses in English, everybody, and hear your reading. I, I send that now, now. Yeah, I send that now. Please. He sent it in the messenger group. Yeah. Okay. I will, I will read in Portuguese because I am trying and it uh, doesn't work today. <laughs> okay. A vida é uma guerra. A pressa em e novela Sonhos mastigados pela história de um ventre seco e ansioso. Alguém quebrou o vaso antes que as rosas, mo rosas murchem. O líquido das órbitas alimenta o um amor. A vida é uma guerra, a vida é uma guerra, insônia infantil. Me bata, me bata a alma com os dedos e ela prende palavras da terra molhada. Palavras de conforto, palavras de aceitação, palavras que abraçam. Empuram palavras para, as pala para que as palavras não chorem. Palavras falidas, palavras de migalhas. A vida é uma guerra. Estamos num campo minado de palavras. Música explode, rasga a esperança. Quebra, quebra, quebra os olhos. Mamá, mãe, mãe, a vida é uma guerra. Mas a vida é uma guerra e eu sou vitória, eu sou o triunfo, eu sou uma mãe no campo da batalha, eu sou uma mãe no ringue de boxe. A vida é uma guerra e rosas nos sangram as palavras, as espigadas de chocolate, a lasanha enrolada no teu ego. A vida é uma guerra e as folhas permanecem verde, verde de esperança, verde, verde de uma esperança morta. Verde de uma esperança murcha, verde, verde, sem cheiro de vermelho. Estou numa guerra com a vida, experiências com as mãos quebradas, agarrem os meus ombros. Recuso, recuso e recuso acreditar que o amor me machuca. Eu me recuso, eu me recuso acreditar que tudo que não me faz sorrir. A vida é uma guerra, a vida é uma guerra de emoções, a vida é uma guerra de medo, a vida é uma guerra para parar de amar. A vida é uma guerra, mas eu, eu sou Glória, e eu sou filha de Vitória e mãe de Gabriel. E é isso. A vida é uma guerra. Thank you. That was wonderful, you know. Even without understanding, we could understand for the way you portrayed it to us. Thank you. Life is a war, and I would like with just one little, little piece for our listeners because they yeah. cannot read the English. By the way, you 
will be able to read the English, not only the people are in our chat, but there will be the book afterwards. So the reader was just wonderful. I just want to read a little part. Mom, 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 life is a war. I am the victory. I am triumph. I am the mother on the battlefield. I am the mother in the boxing ring. That was so powerful, Thank Gloria. Thank you. Thank you so much. And from one warrior, I'm going, I want to go now to somebody else very special, a dreamer also, a warrior and a dreamer. We're going to the USA and we're meeting Kimberly Crafton Kim, who comes from Pennsylvania. Kimberly is a writer of narrative essays, letters, articles, and cultural guidebooks. She's a respected leader in cultural projects. She works in several pro uh, projects, local, national, international, with a lot of different organizations, all of them for humanitarian purposes, like the National Endowment of, for the Humanities, the Institute of Museum and Library Study, the Pennsylvania Historic and Museum Commission. She's always focused on connecting people to their own forgotten histories, to their ancestors, their neighbors, their communities, their world. Her art of writing is very personal and it's, it feels almost like the walking between mystical, the mystics of the daily life and then sometimes she catches little details that other people don't see um, and that want to be caught, loved and understood. She lives between the United States and several uh, European countries. At the moment with the COVID restrictions, she is only in the United States, but I really hope that she will come back soon to Europe, to Italy, and we are gonna meet, meet each other for sure. And I'm not sure which poem she's gonna read tonight, so she will tell her as herself. Kimberly. Thank you. My heart is overflowing right now. This has been a celebration of relationships between each one of us, these small interconnections that have now turned into this giant tapestry um, that that is really powerful and covers us all in these times that are beautiful, as we've heard. They are difficult, they are a war, they are a balm, something to soothe the soul as we get to know ourselves. So it is all of those things and my heart is full. So thank you. Life is a folding. Life is a folding like a dough, fold in half, push, turn, again in half, push, turn. Life is a folding like of hands sitting quietly in the lap, clasped tight as if in prayer. Life is a folding of letters written to the dear, to the hungered after, to the injured by. Life is a folding like of money in the pocket, folded carelessly or with greatest care. Like of clothes neatly packed to go or hastily thrown into life's home's drawer. This folding of time, trying to make it fit into our comprehension, of dreams, tucking them away for a better time, a presence making ourselves smaller so as not to offend. This folding keeps us busy, so busy, for we can never be still, lest something of us take up more room than it should. Life is a folding, like of tablecloths and linens and handmade doilies everything we make to cover what is there in order to make it more beautiful. 
like of window shutters, closet doors, and room dividers, everything we pull tight in order to keep the eyes of the world from seeing too far inside. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much. I love the way how with everyday little things, objects and rituals and gestures, you can describe something so deep. It's, uh, it's really touching and this folds, it's, it's a fold also in time and space and it okay. creates, it creates new worlds. Thank you life so much. Is, life is found in our most simple, repetitive movements. That is our deepest self. So thank yes. you. Thank you to you. Thank you. And we go to another very valued member of PLCS, Annette Tarpley, also from the United States. Annette has been writing prolifically for the last year and is known internationally. She has published two books, Poetry and Popery and Two Hearts, and is the founder and administrator of the Passion of Poetry, the Facebook site. Try to follow it, it's really interesting. And is working on a third book, an anthology uh, for the site, which, which will contain poems from over 100 people. And her site is so big that now has almost 10,000 members. And I love very much the way that Annette writes, because it's, uh, she tells stories. She can see and make us see things. She's telling, um, she's, she's telling the life of somebody. She's telling the, uh, an happening. And she starts from the description and goes down and down, deeper and deeper. And the same is for Annette. Annette sent me several poems and asked me, which one should I read? I never gave her an answer. I, because I like all three of them. I hope she, she has one now that she decided by herself because I really like all of them. Annette. Okay, thank you. It's very lovely to be here with all of you. Your poems are all so beautiful and deep and, and everything. I, and I'm struggling. So what I'm struggling with is which poem to read because as I'm listening to you all, I think, well, shall I go really deep or should I, what I, it's kind of like when I go out to dinner and I can't figure out what I want until the last minute, you know, I just kind of like eeny, meeny, miny, mo kind of thing. So I'm, I'm struggling with it. And um, so I was going to actually be really lighthearted and go into my little story and my fantasy thing that I wrote the other night called The Sleepless Queen. It's actually like a fairy tale, and it's totally not deep like y'all stuff. It is. <laughs> but it tells about me, because actually one of my um, moderators gave me the title um, because I don't get much sleep. I, I work a lot on the site and so forth. And um, then I thought, no, maybe I should go deeper, because you all but I've been really, you know, doing deep stuff. I mean, I even pulled out the I'm getting divorced, ticked off poem, which actually put me back into poetry. So I'll, I'll take a vote. Do you want something fantasy, lighthearted, or do you want something deep? You want deep? You want deep? Okay. All right, we'll go deep. So this is the poem that actually got me back into poetry uh, when I went through my divorce about four years ago. And so it, it talks about the good, the bad, and then uh, in the end, I'm strong. So just remember that. In the end, I'm strong. It's called Broken Dreams. I actually know this by heart. It's the only one I know by heart. It's three minutes long, but I brought it out because I haven't recited it for a while. So, um, Broken Dreams. A love that flourished, the fresh and new, a man who promised to be loyal and true. My heart I gave you to hold and to keep. In arms, they once held me as I went to sleep. Lips, they merged, holding steadfast at night. The sun then, excuse me, I knew that was going to happen. The sun, the morning then dawned and the sun grew bright. 
you promised me you would love me for a lifetime, you said, or hearts now broken, my heart now broken, with all, or, excuse me, you promised you would love me for a lifetime, you said, or vows now spoken with a life together ahead, I'll just read it. The love and the marriage was so wonderful and bliss, but soon I realized something was amiss. You grew so cold in your touch I no longer felt, no love once true soon began to melt. A flame that burned so hot and true is now growing dimmer, it no longer grew. My heart you held once near your own, the house where we live is no longer a home. Soon I watched as you grew distant and cold and wondered, will we be together as we grow old? Promises once spoken, love whispered in my ear, come a bit closer and let me make this clear. You are no longer a man I yearn for. You are not a man I love and adore. True love and respect were never part of the game, and once I realized this, things were never the same. A man of honor, integrity, and truth you claimed to be. But soon I realized none of these things were, excuse me, a man of honor, integrity, and truth you claimed to be. But then your true color showed through, and I began to see. None of these things ever were you. It was a picture you painted and a fairy tale you drew. Our marriage in reality could no longer be saved. Love and time, these things you no longer gave. Our marriage was a sham and I could no longer see. The man who once loved me was to no longer be. My beauty, you indicated, was a passing thing after promising me forever and always with a ring. That is pretty, you said. That is me. How superficial and shallow can you really be? It's the exterior you look at, not the person within, and then say goodbye to us as you widen your grin. Through the years, methodically, trying to lessen my worth, that I'm so very strong and I'm giving birth to the me that I lost who once walked this earth, and you me will be that I soon will unleash, a woman whose inadequate self-esteem will now cease, Never again will I tolerate a man who dictates, a man who withdraws affection or alienates. I will no longer mourn that man I thought you to be, for you're never that man who now I see. A strong woman I am with beauty and grace, a woman who loves and looks beyond the face. Never again will I allow another man to define the wonderful person I am who's faithful, true, and kind. Ideals they once existed returned to broken dreams. A life appeared shattered, but is not what it seems. I go forth with confidence in the midst of new dreams. Dreams full of happiness, life that starts anew, embracing each day and following it through. To live my life as I wish from now on, the key factor being that you are now gone. That's broken dreams. I went deep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Annette. Very courageous. And that's exactly what we needed today. Uh, yes, a warrior, a cry, a needed cry for, uh, for yourself, for finding yourself. And I'm happy that you went back to poetry with this poem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annette. We're all... I, I really have a lot to thank him for, actually. Yes, <laughs> exactly. How to take the best from a dark situation. Very well done. We are going towards the end of the, the program, and there are two more points. And it's Cano's poem and my poem. I want to, I presented Cano already to you before, but she's also a poet. So let's see what Cano has for us today. Cano, it's your turn. Thank you, Lucilla. My poem is on silence. Hush, hush, there it comes, there it goes. And then the silence. Can I still feel your heart? Beating drop by drop into the ocean of love. The sound of silence is your choice. You utter, but you can't raise your voice. Words have been stolen from your lips. That fragrance from the clouds. Wind is blowing. Your solitude is growing. Stars in the night, full of bright light. Your heart is at its light. I can feel.
Priscila para que pueda traducir. <risa> Muchas gracias. Gente de tierra, desde lo más profundo que alberga la tierra, una raza de personas se libera. La sangre viendo los rayos de sol, una sangre diferente que bombea su corazón. Caminaron un sendero muy oscuro, donde hubo una luz que guía su destino, convirtiendo su sangre en vino. ¿Dónde encontraremos la salida? Si no la encontramos, nuestra vida está perdida. El frío inmenso recorre nuestro torso desnudo. ¿Cómo va a aceptar nuestra raza al mundo? Es difícil aceptar la realidad. ¿Cómo a nuestra gente la desaparecen sin piedad? Nuestro entorno cada día se parece a un infierno y al huecufu ya le están sirviendo, dedicado a mi gente de tierra y somos tierra. ¡Ya, ya, 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 ya! Ah, no puedo uh, traducir todas las, los, las poemas. Uh, <laughs> but I can say just the gist of it. It's a in a chant for our people, for Mostra Greek, ritual uh, song um, for finding the, their own roots, how to find their own roots in a world where their culture is disappearing. So, thank you, Amelia. Gracias, Amelia. Thank you. Lemoria, muchos saludos para todos y un gusto de compartir con ustedes. Eh, en mi idioma, Peu Cayal. Peu Cayal, Marishi Huevo. Ya, ya, ya.
just two words uh, any event uh, is a team work of many people so this was indeed a, a great team work of progressive literary and cultural society but i must thank uh, lucila and kanupriya who have put up so much effort and you know lucila has been continuously like kanu said lucila has been continuously texting in the group and though kanupriya was not so active on uh, facebook uh, messenger but she was continuously ringing me and asking me even after before uh, after her exam duty even in her exam nation so and today we met met so many wonderful poet uh, with whom we have never met before and it was so wonderful because uh, this is the language of love uh, which is in the heart of the uh, every woman around the world hope we will meet again soon and we will continue uh, this uh, women poetry and other uh, poetic event uh, on our platform and it was wonderful wonderful evening thank you everyone thank you all the viewers also Thank you thank you everyone